Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Uh, so let me say uh, good afternoon and welcome back to Tannenbaum's World Olympics for All webinar series. Uh, my name is Daniel Del Nido and I am Senior Education Program Associate at the Tannenbaum Center for Interreligious Understanding. I'm looking forward to continuing our conversations about teaching the values of respect, diversity, and good sportspersonship through the Olympic Games. I would like to note uh, as we begin this session that today's session is being recorded. You will be able to access the recording on Tannenbaum's website after today's session is finished. Also, I will be taking questions at the end of today's session. If you have a question that you want me to answer, please put it in the chat and I'll address it after this presentation. I'm excited to begin part two of our five part webinar series on using our updated curriculum World Olympics to build behaviors of respect for difference, including religious difference in students. But before I get to that, I have some pop quiz questions for you. So first question, name one sport that is not included in the Olympics. Is it A, table tennis, B, polo, C, pentathlon, or D, fencing? You can put your answers in the chat. Name the sport that is not included in the Olympics. All right, thank you. The correct answer is B. The sport not included in the Olympics is polo. Next question. Who was the first gymnast to score a perfect 10 at the Olympics? Is it A, Mary Lou Retton, B, Ali Raisman, C, Simone Biles, or D, Nadia Comaneci? So who is the first gymnast to score a perfect 10 at the Olympics? Answers in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> the correct answer is D, Nadia Comaneci of Romania. So thank you all for your answers to these quiz questions. I hope that these questions got us thinking a little bit about the past and the present of the Olympic Games, as well as how different nations, cultures, and histories are represented in the Games. Celebrating the diversity that the Olympic Games represent is the theme of this webinar series. Celebrating cultural and religious diversity is central to our work at the Tannenbaum Center for Interreligious Understanding. Tannenbaum is a secular, non-sectarian, not-for-profit organization that promotes justice and builds respect for religious difference by transforming individuals and institutions to reduce prejudice, hatred, and violence. As a secular and non-sectarian organization, we're not here to promote religion, nor to denigrate religion, nor to advocate for any particular religion. We're here because religion is an important component of people's lives and identities. We believe that everyone, regardless of their religious or non-religious affiliations, deserves to have their cultures, beliefs, and practices treated with respect. The World Olympics for All webinar series will give you practical advice on how to teach behaviors of respect through the Olympic Games in a way that is fun, interactive, and builds important social and emotional skills in students. Our aim is to make teaching respect easy for you. We will show you how to use current and past Olympic events to teach social and emotional skills of respectful curiosity and good sportspersonships to students. We will also give suggestions on how to fit lessons and activities that build social and emotional skills into English language arts, social studies, and STEM content areas. By the end of this webinar series, we hope that you will be inspired not only to use some of the content that we provide, but also to build on the lessons and activities we discuss and make them your own. This discussion is made possible by a generous grant from the Nissan Foundation. Without their support, we would not have been able to take the time to develop the unique tips and suggestions we will provide in this webinar series. Their support has also made it possible for us to deliver these sessions free of charge. As we begin today's session, I would like to take this moment to thank the Nissan Foundation for its support of Tannenbaum's work. Today's session will focus on the core moral values of the Olympic Games. 
we will discuss how to explore the history of both the ancient and the modern Olympic Games with students and how to use that history to illustrate Olympic values, including the value of good sportspersonship addressed in last week's session. We will focus in particular on how diversity and inclusion have become increasingly important Olympic values. The games have grown over the past century to include athletes of different abilities from a greater number of countries, cultures, and religions. Today's session will provide ways to bring the traditions, symbols, and values of the Olympic Games to life in the classroom. We will also discuss how to structure critical reflection on inequalities and injustices that have shaped Olympic history. You can make these conversations about values, diversity, and justice relevant to students' own lives and learning communities by designing an Olympic Games in your own classroom, program, or school. In this session, we will go over how to create agreements and mottos of good sportspersonship that will serve as students' Olympic oath of good conduct. We will also show how students can celebrate different abilities and cultures in their own opening and closing ceremonies. The lessons we'll discuss today stem from Unit 2 of our World Olympics curriculum. These lessons develop common core ELA literacy standards of oral and written communication in a variety of ways. Investigating the past and present of the Olympic Games exercises higher order thinking skills of comparison and contrast, as well as synthesis and analysis. Students will develop critical thinking skills through group discussion of histories of injustice and unfairness related to the Olympics. Students will also build their vocabulary by defining key terms, such as symbol, motto, and ideal. These lessons will also help students develop the interpersonal and the social and emotional competencies they will need to work together successfully. Our lessons today emphasize collaborative and project-based learning and provide opportunities for students to examine prejudice and bias. To create their own Olympic opening and closing ceremonies, students will need to work together and imagine ways to, to value the diverse talents, skills, and backgrounds of their peers. In doing so, students will develop skills of cultural competency and concern for each other's feelings. So with that, let's get into today's discussion. Today's first lesson uses symbols to explore the values of the Olympic Games. Examining symbols helps students recognize the different ways individuals, institutions, and traditions express their values and traditions. It also allows students to connect the values of the Olympics to the values that they're familiar with. This lesson begins by asking students to look at some of the symbols that are represented on this slide. Let's do some of this together. Do you recognize any of the symbols shown here? Put your answers in the chat. The peace symbol, yes. Poison, mm -hmm. poison pirates, very good. Star of David, medical symbol, yep. Great, thank you for your responses. We also have a heart symbolizing love or affection and uh, the symbol of, of, of Islam. And we've already kind of started to do some of this together. Look at some of the, of the symbols here that have multiple meanings. So you mentioned looking at the skull and crossbones, for instance, that can mean a number of different things. It can refer to poison. It can refer to pirates. It can refer to death more generally, right? An image can carry a number of different meanings and different groups might use an image to convey a variety of messages. So once students have identified these symbols, you could then engage them in a conversation on how images convey meanings and whether they can think of any other examples of symbols from their own experience. The goal of this portion of the lesson is for students to learn how to define the term symbol and connect it to the examples from their own lives and from the larger world. So we've provided a sample definition of the term symbol on this slide. One way to guide students vocabulary building is to ask them at the beginning of the class if they know what a symbol is and if they can think of any examples of symbols. Once they have completed working through their examples, you can read them this definition or print it on chart paper. With an older or more advanced class, you can also ask students to work in pairs or larger teams to develop their own definition of a symbol. 
With an understanding of symbols under their belts, students are now ready to turn to the symbols of the Olympics. We recommend a jigsaw approach to teaching Olympic symbols and the values they convey. Divide the class into five groups and direct each group to research a different symbol. The Olympic flag, the Olympic wreath, the Olympic flame, the Olympic torch, and Olympic mascots. The World Olympics curriculum includes materials written by Tannenbaum staff and affiliates on each of these symbols and what they mean. Appendix H of the curriculum includes recommendations for additional classroom readings that could be read as a group or assigned to different groups to go into further detail on each of these five symbols. Once they have completed their research, allow students to present their findings to the other groups. Students can use forms that are provided in World Olympics to structure oral presentations. You could also have students research or create additional images related to each Olympic symbol and put together a visual collage. Students should come away from this lesson with a greater appreciation for the values that the symbols of the Olympic Games express. They should recognize how symbols derived from the ancient Greek games, such as the torch, emphasize continuity across time. And by carrying the Olympic flame from city to city in a relay race, the spirit of the games is carried forward into the present. The Olympic flag and Olympic mascots express respectively the unity and diversity of the nations and cultures represented at the games. And the laurel wreath reminds us that amidst all the diversity of the games, people still come together to celebrate athletic achievement and good sportspersonship. To finish off this activity, you can engage students in a discussion about what the symbols of the Olympic Games teach us about the Olympics core values and what students can take away from these values for their own lives. Our second activity today compares and contrasts the history of the ancient and modern Olympic Games. And it begins, just like today's session did, with a quiz. So to set up this quiz, write down facts about the ancient and modern Olympics on note cards and pass the cards out to students. World Olympics includes a large number of facts you could choose from to craft your own quiz. On this slide are five examples from the curriculum. I'll read each one of them out to you. And as I do, write in the chat whether you think these statements are true about the ancient Olympic Games, the modern Olympic Games, or both the ancient and modern Olympic Games. So ancient, modern, or both. So let's go through all five of these. Number one, only free men and boys who are not criminals from the Greek city states and kingdoms that agree to honor the Olympic Games truce can compete in the games. Is this true about the ancient Olympics? the modern Olympics, or both? Okay, I'm seeing some ancient here. All right, let's go on to number two. The host country creates a mascot for the Olympic Games it is hosting. Ancient, modern, or both? I'm seeing some modern now. Number three, a flame is lit to open the Olympic Games and is kept burning in a cauldron throughout the games and is put out to signify the closing of the games. Where would we put that one? Ancient, modern, or both? I've seen some both here now. Number four, the athletes take an oath at the beginning of the Olympic Games. Seeing an ancient, I've seen them both. A couple different answers here. All right. Ancient or neither. All right. And number five, there are summer and winter Olympic Games. Is that the case in the ancient Olympics, the modern Olympics, or both? Modern. Okay, I've seen some moderns here. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your thoughts. Now let's go over the answers. Okay, so you all pretty much got them all right. Uh, number one is true of the ancient Olympics. Number two about mascots, that's modern. Number three is both. Uh, number four is also both. I know we had a couple of different answers for this about taking an oath. 
And five, there are summer and Olympic, uh, excuse me, summer and winter Olympic Games in the modern Olympics only. Thank you very much for participating in this. Allowing students to compare and contrast the ancient and modern Olympics gives them the opportunity to analyze how the games have changed over time. It also provides an opening for discussion of issues of justice and fairness in the history of the Olympic Games. The fact that only males were allowed to compete in the ancient Olympic Games, for instance, raises issues of sexism in Olympic history. You can also start a conversation about systemic inequalities in the modern Olympics by asking students if they can name places that the Olympic Games has been held. Your conversation will reveal that no African country has ever hosted a summer or winter Olympic Games. Neither have countries in Central, South or Southeast Asia, the South Pacific region, Central America, or the Caribbean. It's worth noting that Dakar, Senegal is scheduled to host the Youth Olympics in 2026, making Senegal the first African nation to host an Olympic event. However, it is still important to have students think critically about how histories of inequality affect the selection process for Olympic hosts. These conversations make for excellent additions to social studies lessons on imperialism and on international relations. One other statement that expresses the values of the Olympic Games is the Olympic Oath. To focus on the importance of the Olympic Oath, let me ask you all a question. Can you think of examples of times when people take an oath? Put your, uh, put your answers in the chat. in court, citizenship, witness testimony, a jury, army. Yes, these are all great answers. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, allow me to ask you a follow-up question. Why do you think people take oaths? You can put your answers in the chat here. Why do you think people take oaths in these circumstances? People like repeating things. <laughs> well, great. Thank you very much for your responses. Make it a public commitment. Great. Today's third lesson, which focuses on the Olympic oath, starts with you posing these questions to students. You can supplement these questions by showing students video footage or having them read examples of, tech, of the text of oaths, such as the Hippocratic Oath for doctors, the presidential oath of office, or the swearing in of witnesses giving testimony in court. Have students discuss what values each oath expresses and why they think certain professions require individuals who, to, who participate in them to take an oath. You can either work with students to develop their own definition of an oath or provide one for them. In this sample definition, note the importance placed on one's future action or behavior. It's important for students to recognize that reciting an oath commits people to follow a certain standard of behavior in their subsequent actions. You can extend this activity by discussing how people are held accountable for the oaths they take. In this slide, We've put up three examples of individuals taking oaths. President Biden taking the presidential oath of office, graduates of the United States Air Force Academy, and an individual being sworn in to testify in court, in this case at the Nuremberg trials. You can show students these or any other examples of individuals taking oaths and ask them why they're doing it and what consequences people face if they break their oaths. And finally, why it's important to have consequences for keeping and breaking oaths. <clears throat> From here, it's easy to turn to examine the Olympic oath. Since the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in 2018, the athletes, coaches, and judges' oaths have been merged into one oath that all participants take at the beginning of each Olympic Games. Read the Olympic oath and have your students analyze it. So let's do some of this together. Take a look at this oath for yourselves. This is the Olympic oath. What promises do participants make when taking the oath? Analyze this oath a little bit and 
you know, just put in the chat what specific promises people are committing to by taking this up. Abide by the rules. Drug free, so commit not to using drugs or doping. Level expectations. Right, so thank you. So this is the kind of reading comprehension activity that you can do with students, right? You know, so, and you can go through all parts of the oath and have students discuss them and what they mean. Honoring the participants we have here too, thank you. A good conclusion for this exercise is to emphasize social and emotional skills of empathy and of showing concern for others by asking students how they would feel if they were competing in the games and someone else broke this oath. Why would they feel this way? There are also opportunities to extend this lesson, lesson into a discussion of the past and present of the Olympic Games. Historical links can be made to the ancient Greek Olympic oath, which was taken at a shrine to Zeus, or to the origin of the modern Olympic oath in 1924, the Chamonix Winter Games. You can also branch off into a current events discussion around athletes and doping scandals, even outside of the Olympic Games. Our next lesson brings exploration of the social and emotional skills associated with good sportspersonship and being an ideal athlete from Unit 1 into your investigation of Olympic history and current events. In this lesson, students will create an Olympic agreement of good sportspersonship that everyone could agree to follow. You can post this agreement in the classroom to serve as a class-wide agreement of respectful conduct. It can also form the first step in designing an Olympic Games for your own class, program, or school-wide Olympic Games. If you choose to put on your own Olympic Games, this lesson serves as a good place to announce your plans to your group. You can then add that creating their own Olympic agreement will give students an opportunity to express the values they want their own Olympic Games to stand for. As you begin this activity, you might consider reminding students of their prior work defining and providing examples of good sportspersonship. You can then either divide the class into groups or work as a unit to come to consensus on what promises students want to include in their Olympic agreement of good sportspersonship. An important note that I want to make here is that we recommend using an Olympic agreement of good sportspersonship rather than an Olympic oath. For some students, taking an oath may have a particular connotation for religious reasons. They may be prohibited from taking oaths. So having students come to an agreement on how they will exhibit good sportspersonship enables the inclusion of all students in this student-centered activity. The next step you can take in designing your own Olympic Games is to create a motto. This lesson will give students another way to express the values of their Olympic Games, as well as continuing to build their vocabulary with the terms motto and ideal. A good place to start is with the term motto. So on this slide here, I've got a number of sayings. Have any of you heard them before? And if so, in what context? Put your thoughts in the chat. Lottery, game show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so these sayings are all about the lottery. And they're good examples of short phrases that communicate a key idea. You can give your students the example of the lottery or work with different examples of mottos or of slogans. So examples derived from politics and or from education work really well for this activity. So you can have students consider the motto of your state or even the motto of the United States of America, e pluribus una, or one from, one from many, and have students consider the meaning of each motto. You can use these examples to develop or illustrate a definition of a motto for your students. By going through examples, students will be able to see that mottos are short, they express an ideal, and they guide a group, organization, or even a country. 
depending on your group's grade or reading level, you might consider also going over the term ideal with them. We recommend that students work in groups to develop a motto for their Olympic Games. Individual groups can work together to develop a motto and then can post their suggestions around the classroom. You can then have groups do a gallery walk around the classroom and note any words or phrases that different mottos tend to share. You could then either have students vote on their favorite motto or have the group come to consensus on a motto that they feel best represents their values. Today's final lesson has students collaborate to design the opening and closing ceremonies for their Olympics. This activity allows students to bring the celebration of diversity of talents and of backgrounds they began in Unit 1 to their own Olympic Games. Allow students to read about or watch historical opening and closing Olympic ceremonies. The World Olympics curriculum contains readings on the history of the Olympic Games and Olympic ceremonies. The Olympics YouTube channel has video footage of opening and closing ceremonies from the early 20th century right up to the present. A good way to activate prior student knowledge on Olympic ceremonies is by having them create a KWL chart, that is a what I know, what I wonder, what I learn chart, to record their research. By observing and reading about Olympic ceremonies, students will gain knowledge of the components they will need to design for their own Olympic Games. Once students have concluded their research, work with them to develop programs for opening and closing ceremonies. It's a good idea to work with students as a class, as a whole class, for at least part of the brainstorming and design process. That way you can model questions students can ask about their ceremonies. So if your group decides to follow the format of a traditional Olympic opening ceremony and hold an artistic program, for instance, ask students, what kind of art should appear in the ceremony? Should the ceremony include visual art, like painting or sculpture, or performance art, such as dance or music, or maybe some of both? What should the theme of the artistic program be, uh, be? Is it possible to coordinate with the school's art department to help produce the program? Once you've designed a program with students, allow them to divide roles and responsibilities for creating the ceremonies among themselves. Keep in mind that each of the aspects of the opening and closing ceremonies is an opportunity for multimodality learning among students. Allow students to choose their preferred roles based on their artistic, organizational, writing, or other forms of expertise. As you work with your students to develop their Olympic program, make sure you have them consider who they will need to work with in order to make their vision a reality. This includes not only people in the class or the group, but other people in the school as well, such as the art teacher, the gym teacher, administration, or any others. Build a chart with students like this one for them to see who in the school needs to be involved in putting their Olympic program together. What permission or support will you need from specific school personnel? And with that, we come to the end of our activities for today. The lessons we covered today make excellent additions to social studies content on ancient and modern history, as well as on current events like drug and doping scandals in sports today. When you draw these connections, be sure to highlight the issues of justice and fairness that arise when considering the history of the Olympic Games. Students will not only be able to practice critical thinking skills that connect the Olympics to social justice issues, but will also have an opportunity to consider how to address these issues in their own Olympic Games. Unit 2 of World Olympics is also useful for building student vocabulary and allows for connections to ELA content by combining visual, oral and written activities, you can provide space for multimodality learning that includes all student learning styles. Keep in mind, though, that younger students may need more guidance in developing and understanding definitions of certain concepts. The work students begin on designing their own Olympic Games build on the social and emotional explorations of Unit 1. Students will have an opportunity to focus their understanding of good sportspersonship into an agreement of good sportspersonship they agree to abide by. Creating an Olympic motto, as well as opening and closing ceremonies, allows them to express respect for diversity of backgrounds as well as of talents. And by having students engage in consensus building and small group work throughout the design process, students will practice additional social and emotional skills of perspective taking and empathy. This concludes today's episode of World Olympics for All. 
Our third episode, taking place on March 4th, will turn to good nutrition and how religious identity affects dietary practices. And as a reminder, any participant who attends all five webinar sessions will be entitled to a one-on-one -on -one meeting with myself and other education staff to discuss implementing the World Olympics curriculum in your classroom. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and your participation today, and I'll be happy to take any questions you might have. So I have one question. Does the discussion or activity on symbols at the start of the lesson tie into the activities? That's correct. It's uh, that activity on symbols begins lesson one. Um, and it helps us start to think about symbols of the Olympic Games. So it introduces the idea or the concept of symbol in order to prepare us for thinking about the symbols specifically of the Olympic Games. What are ideas for teaching this in a non-Olympic year? Great question. So uh, we find that students often get interested in athletic competitions in say the spring semester. Um, you know, it's getting warmer, people wanna go outside and do activities. Um, this could be a great way to you know, celebrate the springtime, to start a World Olympics program and start preparing for it before it gets warm out. So at the beginning say of the spring semester, work with students to create a program that will be ready by say May or June. Having your own Olympic program and having students participate in their own Olympic games is a great culminating activity for a class or a program. And it could be a great one to have at the end of the year. So for instance, if you're running an after school program, this can be a great way to you know, organize your activities for the semester and to end on a high note for students who want to participate in a fun athletic activity like this. So thank you, thank you for those questions. Any others? Okay, great. Well, thank you very much again for your time and participation today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great afternoon.